Welcome to the session of Need Buy. This is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your mentor, and in today's sessions we will be talking about seed germination and dormancy. Right? So first of all, we will acquaint ourselves that uh, what is seed? You know, seeds are those entity in which there is going to have a partially developed embryo. So there are two conditions for anything to be called as a seed. One, the partially developed embryo, and second, it must be enclosed by a seed coat. Okay. So all seeds have their own food supply. For instance, uh, uh, they have a cotyledons, or if you talk about the monocot, they have endosperms, where uh, they uh, they can get their uh, own food. And uh, a typical embryo consists of plumule, epicotyle, cotyledons, hypocotyle, and a radicle. Okay. Now let's talk about the classification of seeds. You see. majorly a two types of seeds has been recognized based on the number of cotyledons right so when the number of cotyledons is one what we call them monocot and if it is a two we call them dicot so cotyledon is a part of plant that either store foods or eventually they grows to become first leaves which undergo the very process of photosynthesis right now let's talk about the seed germination there are certain factors which is required for the seed germination what are they they are the very first is what we call moisture temperature oxygen and light now one by one we will talk about that so first of all talk about the moisture so what happens first of all the seed has to take water or imbibe water okay the seed in the course of germination imbibe water and uh, the moisture contained needed for the germination ranges from 25 to 75% okay once the germination process begins right a dry period or lack of water will causes the death of a developing embryo okay so during the course of germination there should be a constant supply of the moisture in order to uh, just uh, keep the process of germination in going okay not temperature you know the optimum temperature is required for the germination so the temperature is going to affect both the germination percentage as well as the germination rate so rate of germination is low at the lower temperature and as the temperature increases the germination increases but as i told you it is only up to the optimum temperature and usually the optimum temperature lies in the range of 68 degree fahrenheit to 120 degree fahrenheit right now oxygen you see oxygen is necessary for respiration to occur so what happens as a result of respiration in due course of germination what happens that food is being oxidized and the energy is released so that's why oxygen is very very important uh that's very simple that some seeds require less oxygen others uh some requires more oxygen okay but uh, uh, you might have seen that uh, the plants that is submerged or the seed which is actually gets submerged in uh, water they don't survive why because when they get submerged they they uh, are unable to get oxygen okay so due to lack of oxygen they they uh, fail to survive right now you see light is not an important criteria for germination light may or may not be present okay so there are some cases in which actually light is required for the germination and these are actually called as a positive photoblastic seeds most uh, lettuce and tobacco that is the most important examples for this uh, positive photoblastic seeds now let's talk about the seed dormancy now you see most seed produced by mature plants pass through a period of inactivity what we call them dormancy okay but within the period of dormancy what happens embryo within them remain viable so the dormancy may be due to some internal factor or some external factor and if we talk about uh, internal factor so the internal factor is due to the presence of immature or underdeveloped embryo okay so what happens normally whenever any seed is formed then embryo is not very developed so or almost all seed require some sort of after ripening period and during that after ripening period what happens that embryo actually 
develop themselves and when they are ready then they can go for the germination process right but at the same time there are some external factor as well okay so seed may require light as i told you that in case of positive photoblastic seed seed will not germinate unless and until it is exposed to light at the same time in some case seed is enclosed by very tough seed coat take an example of coconut you know in case of coconut what happens that the outer region is very very tough they need to be broken by some chemical treatment right and then only it can germinate okay so whenever the germination process requires the breaking of the outer seed coat we use a term called scarification and in that case the seed germinate only when the external uh, the seed coat like substances are going to be broken then only it will germinate right now let's talk about the germination process we can divide the germination process in few very simple steps the very first is what we call water absorption followed by radical emergence then plumule emergence leaf formation and finally the photosynthesis that is going to happen right so you can see there so this is the first thing that comes is the radical and uh, once the radical is formed then we see the very formation of plumule right and then the entire plant is actually comes on okay so one by one we will discuss about that now in case of water absorption what happens that water is going to be imbibed okay so as a result of imbibition of water what happens that water hydrolyzes the cotyledons and they forms an enzyme what we call alpha amylase now that enzyme is responsible for breaking the cotyledons into soluble sugar and those soluble sugar goes to the growing axis okay so with the help of that soluble sugar the further development is going to occur in terms of emergence of the radical as i told you this is the very first event that is going to occur after germinations right so radical is going to emerge so what happens that seed coat will be ruptured and radical will emerge and it will show the uh, downward movement towards the earth in dark coat what happens that seed coat splits near the hilum okay and the young root becomes primary root from which all rest of the branches appears as we can see in the diagram but in case of monocot what happens that uh, young root is actually broke through coilorhiza that is a covering over the uh, the shoot tip covering over the the root tip so the primary root system that develop uh, from the radical is actually temporary and later on it is replaced by large number of fibrous root system that what we have seen in case of the monocotyledons right so after this we are going to have a plumule emergence so above the soil portion of the plant emerges as the radical develops into the plant root system okay in dark coat what happens that the hypocotyl elongates you can see there said so this is the reason that is the hypocotyl is going to elongate okay and as a result an arc is formed which, which is actually uh, helps in pulling the cotyledons so this arc is formed and as a result cotyledons is actually pulled outside the earth later on hypocotyl arc strengthens to vertical portion after passing through the soil surface as we can see in the diagram as well right now in case of monocot what happens that uh, there is a no hypocotyl there is no hypocotyl arc that exists to push the leaf portion through the soil so instead of that the coleoptile covering the plumule pierces the soil surface exposing the developing plant to the sunlight okay so this is the coleoptile okay so they just uh, pierce the uh, soil and and emerges and later on it develops into the plumule now we see there are two types of germination occurs one what we call epigeous or epigeal germination second what we call hypogeous or hypogeal germination so these two has been divided on the basis of that at the time of germination whether the cotyledons is above the surface or below the surface okay so for instance in case of epigeous germination what happens that the hypocotyl of the embryo elongates so this is the hypocotyl that elongates and as a result what happens the plumule epicotyl and cotyledons 
comes above the surface of the earth okay garden beans are a typical example of such epigeous germination but on contrary if you talk about hypogeous germination in case of hypogeous germination what happens the epicotyle elongates mind it in the previous case it was hypocotyle but here it is a epicotyle elongates and raise the plumule above the ground okay so that is why the cotyledon still remains buried inside the earth so p is a typical example of hypogeous type of germinations right so we have seen the radical emergence the plumule emergence and finally the dacot leaf formation so after emerging from the soil what happens that new leaves forms and photosynthesis begins in dacot the hypocotyle arc become straight and the plumule is set the cotyledons spread apart to serve as the first leaf okay they start the very photosynthetic process and start transferring food to the other part of the plant okay in case of monocot what happens that once the colloptile and plumule emerges the first true leaf begins to form okay so here what happens that food supply is actually being done by the endosperm okay and once the first leaf is formed then the photosynthesis begins in the true leaf as they develop right so here what happens growth hormone prevent further development of the colloptile and plumule and at the time the colloptile appears above the soil surface or second root begins to develop at the base of the colloptile which later on form the fibrous root or adventitious root okay so this is all what we have to discuss as far as the entire seed germination and seed dormancy is concerned right thank you